Hey, how you doing? This is Chris over at 3D Palace. How's it been? It's been a long time. I missed you. I often dreamed of you at night. It's good to see you back. All right, what we're going to be doing today is making a box. Now, that sounds pretty boring, but that's kind of the point. Um, a lot of the earliest and most popular 3D Palace tutorials, coffee, hang on, were about making stuff that was simpler so that you, in turn, could then progress and become better. I think a problem with a lot of tutorials is that they assume that you have huge amounts of knowledge when you don't. Now then, follow what I'm doing. If you get confused, hit pause, go back. Or ask me a question. If this is the YouTube thing you're watching, leave a comment below. Believe it or not, I do read them, okay? As long as the comment's not some sort of mad, racist, conspiracy stuff, I'm absolutely fine with it. Right then, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button here. Now, this will maximise my viewport. I love working in perspective. I tend to prefer this over orthographic simply because, you know, I can move around my model. It's a bit like free sculpting, free building, walking around your Lego set, whatever you want to call it, okay? Now, I tend to develop now for 3D and for games, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a customize unit setup, and I always make sure I'm just using generic units, okay? So, if I'm going to be making a box, and this time I just want to make a small strong box, so I'm going to make it about 45 by about 30 by about 30. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the box here, and I'm going to drag it out to any old size, and then if I go here, this box here that says modify, okay, so I'm going to give it a length of, let's say, 60 centimeters, because I'm working in centimeters, not inches. Inches are the devil's tool. A width of 45 and a height of 45. Uh, let's see how that looks. Quite blocky and chunky and crate -y, actually. I think I'll drop this down to about 30. See how that looks. That's not bad, that's not bad. It's getting there. I think I'll just widen it a teeny bit more. Because I'm just freehand designing this, you know. I'll make this 40. Okay, and this is the size of our box. Hey box, how's it going? Now, what I'm gonna call this is a strong box. And I tend to name things, because it's important so that I know, you know, what it is later on, I can search for it. If I was to hit the letter H, it'll bring up this. Okay, select from scene, and there's my strong box. So, you know, it's easy to find. Okay, done that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit F4 and that'll show me my edges. See those? Now, at the minute, I only have six polygons to work with. Okay? That's not many, but it makes things a lot easier. And I'm going to convert this to an editable polygon. Right. As it stands, we could export this into a game engine, and we would have a small box with not much detail on it. That's fine, but why don't we start making this a bit more interesting, a bit more detailed, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my edges. Control A. Okay, oops, pressed the wrong button there. So all I've done is I've selected edge and then pressed Control and A. Do it again for you, just in case you missed it. Select my object, so I just dragged on it. Hit here, select by edge, and then Control A just to select all the edges. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go chamfer, but rather than going here in the settings, I'm going to go here and just click the button. Now I do it this way because I like to freehand, and it can take a little bit of getting used to. Okay, but if I just rest my cursor over the highlighted line here and then drag it, you can see that I can do this. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? If you're not happy with the result, just hit Control Z. I'll do this a lot. All right, so I'm gonna pull this down. Okay, just put a little curve on it. Well, that's not much of a curve, that's quite a straight edge, right? But if I were to chamfer it again, And what I'm doing is, I'm not letting go until this is proportional. See, that, that, and that look the same to me. They may not be, but what I'm trying to do really is just kind of create the illusion that it's a curved surface. Yeah? We know it's made out of straight edges, but if I hit F4, you can see now that it's a lot rounder. And it has these funny little, like, pockets at the edge here. Now, we could have fixed that in Chamfer. Okay, because there are options for that. So if I just go into my chamfer here, you'll see that we have various different options. 
like we could have an open chamfer, we could have a smooth chamfer, we've got the type of chamfer and we've got the chamfer type here which is triangular but I could make that a quad if I preferred so I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm just doing a control Z, just take them away and in my chamfer this time I'm going to change this to a quad. Click tick, hang on I'll do that again, chamfer there we are, so you can see this is now the quad type. Okay, so I'll cancel it and then I'll do my chamfer again. Now, if I had four rather than three coming in on this, you see one, two, three. If I had four edges coming on this, this would make it a square chamfer. One and again two, but you can see the difference. The only problem is that you have to kind of be pretty sure how you're going to do this. If you look, this one doesn't curve as well because of the way it quads, yeah? So be very careful. Okay, I'm going to take this back and put it as a triangular standard. There we go. As you can see, it curves it much better there. And I did a control Z because it will remember that my chamfer settings don't want the quad chamfer. And I can do that. If I open my chamfer, you can see the connect edge segments here. I've accidentally set them to four. I'll just cancel that. I don't want too many curves in this. All right. So now that we know about chamfer, okay, you can see how easy it is to start setting up your chamfer here. So. If I want to, I can just increase the amount of segments I've got and just round that out, like so. And you see how it rounds the edges. So it's all down to you. If you want to do it manually, you can. If you want to do it where you increase the number of segments, you can. So I'm just going to click tick. OK. Pull back. Now, something that's kind of important to pay attention to is our polygon count. If I go over here to our tools, See here, utilities, more, polygon counter. And you can see at the minute we've got 332 polygons. Okay, I normally keep this off screen. Now, if you're working to make an asset for a game, which a lot of people are, then you'll want to keep your polygon count, you know, ideally as low as possible. Um, I tend to work mid-poly now, so I'd be looking at a couple of thousand polygons, you know, for an object. but. That's just my own personal preference. If you're working on a game a game system that's going to be using low polygon, you might want to keep your box at below 500 polys, below 1,000 polys, whatever. It's really down to you. Now, if you're doing it for Archviz, or if you're doing it just to model stuff for the sheer joy of it, you don't give a damn about polygon model, uh, polygon limits. Just go hog wild. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the illusion that our box opens. Okay, so I am going to... It can uh, just hit connect and that'll give me this line here okay so now I can bring that up to about there because a box normally opens at the top it doesn't open in the middle maybe a bit further down then we can assume there's something in the lid and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the chamfer tool again now I can't use it as it is because it will put four segments in let's bring that right down and this time I'm just going to drag this until it's like that. Okay. Then click tick. Next I'm going to go straight through the middle and I'm going to do another connect. And this time I'm going to chamfer it like so. Okay. Oops, I accidentally pressed the right mouse button. So there we go. So you see we've got these two polygons came in there. And then I'm going to do a last one. And this time I'm just going to use the. Um, one second, just click out there. I'm just going to use Swift Loop up here. And I want to pull that to about there. Okay. Now, the reason I did that is because I can then select this edge. And I'm going to press R and just scale it in like that. Why have I done that? Because 
I'm going to make an inset area around the top of the box here. Okay, so what I need to do is I'm going to select that and then I'm going to click ring. And that will select every single one of these edges all the way around the model like that. Okay. Now if I hold control and select by polygon, there we go, I've got it in here. Okay. So now we're going to give the impression that there is an you know, the top comes away from the bottom, the lid opens, whatever. So I'm going to press extrude, and here, rather than extruding by group, I'm going to extrude by local normal. And it's not a hat, so I'm going to bring it in. Like that. And click tick. Actually, I think I'll select that one as well, and click tick. There we go. Okay, so that's all now been bought in. Now, what I want to do next is I would like to select these and ring. Okay, so it's going to do the same thing again, you see. Now I'm going to use my move tool. I'm just going to narrow that a little bit. Okay. Now I'm at 656 polygons at the moment, which isn't too bad. So let's have a look at this. I don't need to chamfer this edge. If I'm doing high polygon, I will, but I don't need to. Um, but I'll show you the difference anyway. Notice I'm not going to chamfer the inside, okay? So if I was to chamfer this, just a teeny bit, you'll see that it kind of softens the edge out of that. Okay, so you can see kind of the rim, but you can also see the highlight on the rim through there. I think what I might do is just make that a little bit narrower, just a minor thing. So I'm just going to bring this down to maybe 0 0.05 or something. Okay, and that way we've got our very tiny rim there. Okay, because so I'm just showing you how we're making this. Okay, so already our box looks like a box or a crate or whatever. Now, what we want to do is maybe have some handles in our box so that we can carry it around. So what I'm going to do is just go straight through the middle again. And I'm going to do a connect, like so. And I'm going to chamfer that. And I'm just doing it by freehand, like I normally do. Okay, so straight through there. And we'll assume it's quite a heavy box, so maybe to there. And I'm going to get this edge here. Hmm, let me see. I think I'm going to put in another connect. So I'll just use a switch bloop. And there. Now you'll notice we're not getting a loop at the front here. Okay. Um, I can fix that depending on whether you want to have edge loops or not. Actually, I think, now I'm thinking about it, rather than building all those extra polys, I'll do it a different way. Because this makes slightly more sense. This is what I do, by the way, okay? I'll be showing you how to do something, and if I think of a better method to do it, I'll abandon the old one. Um, I like to show people when I make mistakes. I like to show people when I'm doing things in a different way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this polygon up. Okay? Don't worry that this is like that. Okay, that's not important. Okay? What is slightly important, I think, is that I don't want to break this chamfer here. So before I do it, I'm going to put in one loop, but just one. Now you can see it's not going across to there. Um, if you want to keep your loops in place, then, oh, excuse me. God, I love being able to pause. Right, now what I want to do is I want to cut across there. So I've got all these windows should not be expanded like this. I don't know why they are. I think I must have pressed something wrong. Anyway, I'm going to cut. And I'm just going to cut from here, right the way to here. You see how it turns into a cross? And by doing that, we've got the loop going across the bottom, and we have this piece here, which is what I wanted. Okay. Now, just grab that. Thank you very much. A lovely kind of refreshment delivered to me. I am going to select this polygon here, turn my model around. 
select this polygon here and just bring them up. And this way, we don't affect the actual layout of our model. Now, I could do it from this one, but I'd need to add another polygon, you see. So I prefer to do it this way. Bring it up. Now, we need to obviously have this come in with a handle. It doesn't need to come in too far, but we need the handle to look sturdy enough to actually carry it with. So I'm going to extrude these straight in like that. And next, I'm going to select these edges. I'm not going to use subdivision on my model, by the way. I know some people tend to design for sub D, and that's useful, especially if you're, you know, building at sub D and rendering, like you know, with your various iterations on. I tend nowadays to work mid poly. This is mid poly stuff. <laughs> Um, it's kind of a halfway between obviously high high poly and low poly and it gets you a much nicer more visual result I mean if you need to work at high poly then yeah work high poly but uh, if you need to work at very low poly work at very low poly I'm not saying either things a bad thing right now you notice that I just did a chamfer there by eye now how can I possibly recreate that amount I don't know what the amount was well actually I do so what I'm going to do is do all these again on this side, because I could have done both at once, but I only selected one. Okay, there we go. Now, if I just go over here to the little button beside chamfer and click it, you'll see it recreates my last one. Click. All right, that was useful. Now, what about this handle? How does the handle work? Well, what we can do is, I'm going to create a cylinder, okay, and I want my cylinder to only have 16 sides. I don't want it to have more than one height segment, and I'm not even interested in how many cap segments it's got. I'm going to auto grid it. Now, it used to be that I'd create everything, everything, just from one polygon. I never add stuff together. That's my old way of doing things. Nowadays, I do it this way. I add. So I'll just pull that there to there. Okay, that's all I've got to do. And now I can build from that. So, right click, convert to. I'm not going to name it because it will be part of my model soon and I'm just going to attach it. Next, I want to get rid of parts. So, hit F3, my model becomes just a wireframe and I can select the polygon at the back and delete it. Hit F3 again and now I can see my model. And I'm going to grab this. Now, I'm going to use a tool called Hinge from Edge, and for this to work, I need to have this edge facing directly downwards. Okay, so I'm going to hit Angle Snap, which is A. I'm going to hit Rotate, which is E. I'm going to carefully rotate this, probably 10 degrees. There, you see, facing downwards. You can keep Angle Snap on if you want. It's up to you. Now, another thing I need to do is, if I do a Hinge from Edge here, I'm going to get a very, very tight angle. And I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a plane. I'll just draw it out like so. Now you notice I've used auto grid so that I can draw it straight on the face. Sorry if you didn't understand that last time. And I'm going to bring it down, not far, just a little bit. And I'm going to make it one by one, okay? And I'm going to name it dummy plane. Now if you give everything a name that you need to throw away that you'll remember, it's a lot easier to remember to delete them at the end. Otherwise, you'll end up importing this plane into, you know, a game engine, or it'll end up appearing on your render, or it'll be somewhere in your Archviz project, and you'll not want that. Okay, now, I'm going to attach that. That is now part of this model, and I can select it if I want to, not you. Right-click. So look, I can select both these now. Beforehand, I'd have to deselect this, and then select that. Now, I'm going to hinge from edge, and see here? Pick hinge. And I'm going to pick this. I'm going to make this 90 degrees. And for the amount of polygons, it doesn't need many. Six, maybe too many. Let's see what it looks like with four. And this is what I call artist's eye time, okay? You want to use your artist's eye and decide what you think is going to look right based on what you're doing. Okay, that's not too bad. So I'm going to click tick. And then I'm going to extrude it. Okay, I don't need to extrude it far because it's a handle. 
maybe to there. All right, now this polygon here. Okay, we've got a choice. I can either rotate this 90 degrees and then move it manually so that it's just started to intersect with there. See that? When it's just visible. Now I can use that, or you can make a new one if you don't feel confident enough to do it that way. Okay, but we want to keep obviously the curve the same. So we're going to do a hinge from edge. See that? It's picked up that hinge, which is cool. And click tick. Right, now I'm going to delete that. And in order to get the other side, okay, so that we've got this handle, what I'm going to do is some symmetry. So S for symmetry. By the way, um, I did that a bit fast, so I apologise. What I'm going to do is, with this selected, I'm going to go to the Modify panel. Under the Modifier list, I'm going to go down. It's all alphabetical until I get to Symmetry. You'll notice it's made another one, which is over there, right? Now I've got to find the axis I wanted to do it on. And you'll notice there's a little arrow just here. If you click on it and click on Mirror. <coughs> And pull this out, and I need to find the correct axis to pull it on. Flip. There we go. So now I can just pull this straight into there. And just when the polygons start to vanish, you know it's in the right place. Okay? Now, don't worry that this isn't straight, by the way. It's because we rotated our object 10 degrees. And so, as far as it's concerned, the object is still 10 degrees offset, but we've moved it. I'm going to click this arrow and I'm going to go back to Editable Polygon. I know it's vanished. That's easy. We just click Show End Result. OK. And we can work down here now. So if I select this and just hit Extrude, and then Delete, and that will delete our end polygon. And there you go. We now have this handle at the side of our box. All right, very simple to do. Now, if I right-click it, convert to editable poly, it'll collapse the stack. And if I want to, I can even get rid of this middle edge. So I'll just, what I do is I double-click it, and then I hold Control, and I hit Backspace. And it'll get rid of that and any of its uh, vertices that were associated with it. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. So. I'm going to hold down Shift and just drag. See that? Clone options. That allows me to copy it. And now I can move this back into here. Okay. And I just want to make sure there's no overlap at the back. So I'm going to make sure it's right in the middle. There we go. Done. Now, what about this bit here? Well, we're just going to do something simple, so why don't we make something like a thumb scanner or something like that. I mean, it'll need a texture to make it look right, but that's okay. So, I'm just going to click on our strong box and select this polygon here. And I'm going to inset this polygon. Now, what I want is for this to actually be a fairly standard rectangle rather than this shape. So I'm going to select the top and bottom and I'm just going to hit the scale tool and I'm just going to scale, 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 scale them until they're like that, then out. I'm doing this the wrong way. Sorry about this. I did tell you I'd show you how I did my mistakes, didn't I? I really must be paying more attention. It's the just the top one I needed to scale in for the time being. Then I can grab the bottom one and scale them in together. And then I'm going to view it from the right. Where is it? There it is. Hit F4 and zoom in. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to use, again, I never turn on, um, what's it called again? You know where you get rid of the jaggies anyway. I never turn that on because I always find the jaggies help me. I'm doing stuff by eye. Now this is something that 
my dear old friend Pete Draper would gladly roast me over an open spit for, so I do apologise, Pete. But I just like doing it this way. Okay, and out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to inset this. So I'm going to bevel it in just a little bit. So I'm imagining that the plastic components that make up the little scanning device will be in there. Then I'm going to bring this forward a bit. In. There we go. And back. Okay, so we now have that. Now, at the back, we don't have any hinges. Um, now, if you look at the shape of our box, okay, if it were to open with the hinges from the inside, it would damage it rather badly. So we do probably need to put in some hinges. The easy way of doing this, I'm going to get a cylinder, and I'm going to drag it out using auto grid from here. Okay, like so. Now, I don't need all of this. I only need half the cylinder, so I can slice it from zero to 180. Okay, that will only give me half the cylinder. Now you'll notice we've got a lot of polygons on here. I don't need that many polygons. I can literally take it down to no, 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 zero. I can literally take it down to maybe ten, maybe even less. Okay, so I'll put that in there. Just going to right click just to get me out of it, and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Okay, now. I'm going to move this into place. Again, like I say, my old method of doing this would be that I would use normally, you know, an absolute belt load of polygons, and I'd just use a single object and just drag it out from there. But our methods tend to adapt as we adapt. And have I rotated this without realizing five degrees in the wrong direction? I probably have. Ooh, look. Actually, that's quite offset, isn't it? which means that's probably not completely flat. OK, well, what I'll do is I'll just do it again. But this time I'll do it off the ground. That's so where I'll know it's right. Slice it. Like so, and rotate it. OK? Because you'll notice that it was offset by a few degrees. And I didn't want to sit and have to work that out manually, because a lot of the time it's very hard to work that out. So if I'm doing things using my usual kind of lapsidaical artist method, I prefer to do it this way. By the way, you're very lucky. My new method of doing uh, doing my 3D Palace tutorials from now on is going to be drinking. So it's an early morning kind of stone cold sober approach should be quite a quite a refreshing change, really. Okay, just make sure that's in there. Seems to be okay. I'm just going to set it in there, right click, convert to a poly, and I'm just going to grab it by vert, just bring it to the back, and then over here. Make sure you've got all of them by the way, it's very easy to accidentally make a mistake and then suddenly have a model that's basically useless. Okay. Now again, what I'm going to do is just hit F3, go around my model, select the inside part. There's two of them, and delete. Okay. And if you want to add a chamfer to the end, just double. it won't actually let you double click incidentally on the end of a cylinder. I've never understood why. I think it's just part of the way that. 3ds max works basically but if i control to select by edge okay so what i do is i select the end polygon i'll come and do it over here as well select here okay and then i am going to what am i doing chamfer Jumper, 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 jumper. Where the hell's jumper gone? I swear to God, I'm going mad here. Oh God, what am I doing? I haven't done control slope by edge. 
Man, I'm going mad. Right, chamfer. It's because I had got a message on uh, on my thing. I shouldn't really look at messages when I'm working. My advice to you, by the way, is always turn off like Facebook and anything else. Right? Always. Okay, and I'm gonna only put one. Okay, just one in, simply because it's a low poly object. Okay, next. Just going to have a quick look at this. And yeah, I'm going to put in a slice view there. Two connects, so I'm just going to do that. And then I can do an extrude. Now, this will shoot straight out, which we don't want. We want it to come in. Bring these right in like that. Tick. Okay, so now we have hinge points on the back. Bring this all in just a little bit. Like so, that way it strengthens the look of the box. Next, attaching stuff. Okay, next we're going to smooth some stuff. Okay, so with my box selected, I'm going to go to smooth. So I just go down here in the modifiers, smooth, auto smooth, threshold 24. 0.5. Okay, now if we go down and look at our handle, okay, you'll see handle there, everything nice and smooth, back piece smooth, okay, but not so smooth that it's destroyed our straight edges, which is important. Alright. Right click, convert to editable polygon. Right, so our entire box comes in at just under 3,000 polygons. I told you I was making mid poly. If I was making a high poly, I'd probably drive this up to 10, 15,000, and I'd put a lot more detail in. I'd have screw holes and things like that. But these are things that can be done and should be done if you work in mid poly for a game engine or low poly as part of your normal map slash texture baking process. Right, copy, hang on. Mmm. Ah, oh, tastes like joy. <laughs> Lovely. All right, now, um, I think what I'll do is I might do a second tutorial for anyone who's interested in taking this a further step but if you are just interested in the modeling side of things and you like hard surface stuff which you should because you're awesome stop here remember if you don't mind like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment in the bottom if you liked it leave a comment in the bottom if you didn't like it I can't stop you really can I but either way I look forward to uh, hearing from you and don't forget to drop by 3dpalace.com or you can blue uh, for hopefully some more stuff. Anyway, bye bye.